the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds. What description can I find for this generation? It is like children shouting to each other as they sit in the marketplace. We played the pipes for you and you would not dance. We sang dirges and you would not be mourners. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he is possessed. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom has been proved right by her actions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers, the Church gives us wonderful teachings through the liturgy of the Word during this season of Advent. One of the important elements of our spirituality is that we are people who are called to listen to the Word of God, meditate on the Word of God, and then put the Word of God into practice in our day-to-day -day life. The measure of one's religiosity is not judged by the external things that a person uses or by putting up marvelous churches, having so many ornaments and decorations or even celebrations. Primary purpose of our religion is to make us discern the will of God, manifest especially through his teaching, through the Bible, and through others who give his word and then follow it. That we should be very certain. Even Mother Mary, who is the first disciple and the best disciple, is someone who listened to the word of God, contemplated the word of God, and then did everything according to the word of God. That is the, we may say, summary of our own spirituality. So in today's first reading and in today's responsorial psalm, we hear about persons who give importance to the word of God and who really try always to put them into practice. The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah 48. The new life that is going to come or has already come is described to the people especially the prophet reminds them of the sufferings that the people had to undergo in the Babylonian exile. And then he says, why all your sufferings? Because you forgot the Lord. You forgot the teaching of the Lord. Even our, in our day-to-day -day life, sometimes quite a number of persons suffer because they did not obey the parents. They went in ways contrary to the gospel. They led lives that are irresponsible. And then people will say, uh, this fellow, because he did all this, only he is suffering, they are saying. Sometimes even people who did not violate the commandments also suffer. For that we know, voluntary sufferings are even through unexpected causes, they are suffering. But then we should not be people who have to suffer because of our sins, because we violated the commandments. So look at these beautiful words where the prophet is speaking in the name of the Lord. I, the Lord your God, teach you what is good for you. I lead you in the way that you must go. If only you had been alert to my commandments, your happiness would have been like a river. You are not alert to my commandments. That's why you are suffering. Your happiness would have been like a river. Now it is like a desert where there is no water. And then the prophet says, or the Lord says, your integrity like the waves of the sea, your children would have been numbered like the sand. So many of your dear ones have been killed. You know what is the reason? You forgot me. I did not have any place in your life. 
never would your name have been cut off or blotted out before me so this is exhortation we have to ask whether some of our sufferings are also because we were not attentive to the lord we have to ask ourselves constantly when we are attentive to the lord and still we suffer the lord will give us the necessary strength to bear the suffering and make that suffering into a source of joy that we have to know and then today's responsorial psalm also any one who follows you lord will have the light of life that's what we have uh, repeated and then there the psalm speaks of uh, the who is the happy man who follow not the counsel of the wicked nor lingers in the way of sinners sometimes we have friends also who lead us in the wrong direction there are some other friends who help us to study better who help us to be loyal to the church who help us to respect the superior some others will say okay come on man do what you want violate all the commandments follow the 11th commandment you know what is the 11th commandment thou shall not be caught <laughs> uh, thou shall not be caught so these people violate all the 10 commandments and then follow the 11th commandment but here the psalm is says uh, such a person will not have the light of life such a person will not have the light of life whoever it is i am 24 hours in the presence of god i am 24 hours a per day in the presence of god there is no reason for me to violate you may cheat one person for a few days many persons for some days but you can never cheat god even for a second even for a second so you have to be aware of it that's why the psalmist says describes the good man the good man who ponders the law of the lord day and night what is law of the lord is nothing but the holy bible who delights in the law of the lord such a man is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters so the contrast between a dry place god forsaken place and then the place that is uh, inhabited and people surround uh, a place here he said do you want to be like a tree which is planted in a dry remote god forsaken place and then uh, slowly dying if you are following the law of the lord you will be like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters that yields its fruits in due season and whose leaves shall never fade and all that you do will prosper you will prosper in all that you do sometimes you say so father i am studying and studying nothing seem to be happening i am doing this and that no success no fulfillment dejection i am in depression i need counseling or psychologically i am upset the first uh, a uh, test you have to do is am i following what the lord expects me to do right from day one yes lord i am trying to do everything all right but then afterwards some so many things happen and then here the word of the lord is very clear if you delight in the law of the lord you will be very prosperous that's what it said so are the wicked no, not are the not are the wicked not so they are like winnowed chaff shall be driven away by the wind for the lord guards the way of the just but the way of the wicked leads to doom so during the season of uh, advent people are told come on be alert to the lord no what is the law of the lord for you i would extend this law of the lord even to oh, the law of the church and to the law of the seminary rules of the seminary because if the law of the church canon law for that matter or the rules of the seminary are contrary to the bible then we should not follow them if they are in accordance with the bible we have to follow them when we are breaking them knowingly and willingly we have to we cannot be so bold when we are breaking some of the rules and regulations they are designed for us speaking about the evangelical council of obedience the law of the church in canon 601 says superiors take the place of god when they command in accordance with the constitutions and people who have love and faith must always obey people who have love and faith must always obey
obey as long as they don't command anything unjust. If they are commanding something to do unjust, so you collect as much donation as possible. Suppose I tell you, you go and pickpocket and bring something or go to the clerician's house and if there are any trees, pluck all the mangoes. <laughs> These are apparently unjust. Even if the superiors do uh, tell you, you should not uh, uh, follow these commandments. Otherwise, they take the place of God when they command in accordance with the constitution. We submit our will to that of the superiors means we are submitting our will to God only. When they command in accordance with the constitutions. And then finally, in today's gospel, people will give all kinds of excuses for not following the words of the Lord. So, this is not all right, Father. That's why I did not give. Come on, don't give any excuses. It only manifests that you don't want to follow the Lord, finally. Here, Jesus describes two groups of children. Some children don't want to cooperate in any game. So, the first game is marriage game. The marriage game, some children must play the pipe, other children must dance. So the children say, no, no, we will not dance. And some children say, we will not pipe, play the pipe. Finally, they show their unwillingness to collaborate and cooperate and play. Sometimes even in the class meeting, sometimes it happens also. Even we have a common program also, some people don't want to cooperate. And then another game is family mourning or somebody died maybe. Some people should sing dirges, the other people should beat their breasts or whatever it may be. Here also some people say, no, we will not do it, we will not do it. Jesus says, you are like those children only, immature, non-cooperative, non-cooperative. You all say that we want to follow the Lord. What is your mistake? You said we will be good followers of God. But then uh, the, you saw two kinds of persons. One is John the Baptist. He was fasting and he preached austerity. You all said he is possessed. Okay. But John also called people to repentance. Some of them repented, some others did not repent. They wanted to be in their own ways. Okay, come on, there is completely different outlook. Uh, that was manifested, proclaimed by Jesus. The Son of Man came eating and drinking and he also called you for conversion. Now you say you don't want to be converted. You say he is a glutton, he is a drunkard. Ultimately, what is the conclusion? You don't want to be converted, that's all. Both of us invited you to conversion. You don't want to be converted. One professor is very strict and then he tells you something, you don't know. He's too arrogant, strict and then scolding like that. Another is so kind, you also abuse his kindness and are not converted. Ultimately, what is needed is that you are converted. You must listen to the word of God. The whole thing, especially during the first part of the season of Advent and all, repeatedly we are told, be converted, listen to the word of God, change your life for the better. And that's what Jesus is asking us today. So we have to examine ourselves. In the meditation also you thought about it, how, where we have failed, yes, Lord, sorry. But the future is always before you. You are still young. Now, unlike me, you are all still very young. The whole future is before you. As the psalmist says, when you are young, you seek the Lord and give yourself totally to the Lord. The whole world will be blessed by you. Your families will be blessed by you. It's a time to change the direction if you have missed the right direction. And may the grace of this Eucharist give us the necessary motivation, strength and commitment to be converted and to remain in following the Lord. And once again, I want to repeat what is there in the first reading. If only you had been alert to my commandments. If only you had been alert to my commandments. You know the commandments sometimes. You are not alert to the commandments. If you are not alert to the commandments, your future will be disaster.